right, Mr. Rops here. And Mr. Cope. And we're going to look at factored form of quadratic functions. The next form to look at. And in this example, you're going to learn about being able to read information from the factored form. You're going to be able to sketch a quadratic from factored form. And then work backwards. Given some information, come up with the equation itself. Okay, so what is the, what, what is the factored form? That is a great question. Here is factored form. It is this where we have a. A is the same a as always been. It's the makes it upside down or right side up, opens up or down, and tells us how fat or skinny the graph is. That's what the a value does. But these values, p's and q's, these refer to my x-intercepts. And so when you see them, it's opposite sign. My x-intercept is going to be p and it's going to be q. And so I can use that to help graph the equation. Sure. And you sometimes refer to those as the roots or the zeros of an equation. Right. Roots and zeros. You should be familiar with those words because all three of these are used interchangeably. All right. So let's do an example here. So I have this quadratic equation. I want to find the x-intercepts. Well, in the past, we'll go through this whole idea kind of thing. We would say that y was equal to 0 which is always true. And I would then have 0 is equal to negative a half, x minus 1, x plus 7. I would multiply both sides by 2, or negative 2 even, to get rid of my fraction, which would give me 0 is equal to x minus 1, x plus 7, because the 2's cancel in the negatives. And so then I would say x minus 1 is 0, so x is 1. Yep. And x plus 7 is 0, and so x is negative 7. And so that's the reason why our p and our q are our x-intercepts. I could have just taken this right, right off and went opposite sign 1 here, opposite sign negative 7. Okay. And I would have these two x-intercepts, negative 1 and negative 7. So x equals negative 1 or positive Oh, backwards. X equals 1 or negative 7. Would you write those as coordinates or would you just, just keep them? Um, if it says the x-intercepts, I can write it like this. If it asks specifically for coordinates, then I have to write them in these coordinate forms here, where I go 1, 0 and negative 7, 0. Those are my coordinates. Okay. The right. coordinates makes it quite clear, I think, that it's, it's talking about a point, right, and not the equation of a line, which is quite nice. So right. it's, I think it's quite... I would agree yeah. with you on that. Okay, so the vertex now, well, I have, let's, hmm, let's skip the vertex and come back to it after we graph it. We'll talk about where it comes from. Let's go to the y-intercept. If I'm going to find the y-intercept, as always, I plug in x to be zero. And so when I do that, I get y is equal to negative 1 half, 0 minus 1, 0 plus 7. And so I get negative 1 half, negative 1 times 7. Two negatives make a positive. A half times 1 times 7 is 7 over 2. And so my y-intercept coordinate is 0 comma 7 over 2. All right. We're starting okay. to be able to get the idea of what the graph looks like here. All right? I know that it goes through 1, 0 and negative 7. And it also has a y-intercept of 7 over 2 is 3.5. So right around here, approximately. I'm ready to talk about the vertex now. Should we do the axis of symmetry first, maybe, and then okay. do the vertex? Oh, that's a great idea. Let's do that. What do you want to talk about the axis of symmetry? So we know the axis of it has to be symmetrical, which means that our axis of symmetry is going to be exactly halfway between the negative 7 and the 1. So the best way to average that is do negative 7, add 1, which is negative 6, and then divide by 2. So halfway between those two points is negative 3. So the average of those two x-intercepts is negative 3. 
Okay, so negative three is right in the middle of negative seven and one, and you can check it's four away from negative seven and it's four away from one as well, so it's, it's in the middle. Super. So now that we have our x value for our axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry is x equals negative three. I'm gonna take my x value and I plug it into my equation. So I get y is equal to negative a half minus three minus one and negative three plus seven. Be careful of my order of operations. Take that. Negative four, positive four. And so I get 16 negative times a negative is positive. 16 divided by two is eight. And so my vertex then, my vertex is negative three comma eight. So negative okay. three comma eight up here. And so I know the graph is gonna look something. Oh, oh get the end. I got my y-intercept oh, yeah. backwards. No wonder why it looks funny. My y-intercept is positive seven halves. And so I'm going to go, here is my graph as such. All right, so let's recap that with the, ver with the vertex. We find the average of the x-intercepts, which is the midpoint of the x-intercepts, midpoint, midpoint, and then the x value into the equation, equation to find the y value. All right, so we've done okay. a, b, c, d, and e. Determine if the point two, negative 10 is on the curve. Well, again, we take our coordinate, we plug it in. Let me change color here to green. So for f, I plug my coordinate in, y is negative 10, is equal to negative a half, two minus one times two plus seven. And then I'm gonna go negative 10, equals negative a half times one times nine, which is negative nine and a half, nine over two, negative 10. Well, those are not the same. Therefore, the point is not on the graph, on the graph. All right, one more to go. Domain and range. Domain and range. Oh, Oops. Go away. <laughs> Domain and range. Let's get my vertical line. If I do vertical line, that is going to be my domain. Okay. So if I take this vertical line and move it across, is it going to touch the graph everywhere? So it's telling me all my possible x values, right? Right. Will it touch the graph everywhere? Yes. I think so. I think yep. so too. Therefore, I know my domain is the set of all real numbers. X can be any real number you want it to be. Switching over to our Y values, let's do blue this way, vertical line or horizontal lines. Okay, so all the possible Y values. Right, and so if I go up and down here, it's touching the graph, touches the graph everywhere, and it stops up here. At the vertex is the key. Okay, so how high was that? The high is that well. If I look at my vertex, here is my coordinate for the vertex. And so it goes up to eight. So y must be less than or equal to eight.